It's really amazing how much of a study you can do on a clutch. You can find out, you know, you can have the idea that after you pull the clutch out and put it on, you know all there is to know about a clutch. Um, but uh, what we're going to be looking at today, and by the way, you don't have to complete that test before we get through today. You can actually complete it and turn it in, you know, this afternoon or something like that. Just make sure you get it turned in. Um, Here's your clutch system coupled in with the transmission, the driver start, stop, idle. Everybody that has driven a manual transmission vehicle understands the purpose of the clutch. When you mash the clutch, it uncouples the engine from the transmission. My wheel's part of the deal, pressure plate, pinches the clutch disc in between. Now, did you notice that this, uh, how much this little, uh, that little cage looking thing in this, uh, was that, that clutch we put in this Ranger had that same little funky cage right there. See, see that? Now, I never used to see those on any uh, clutch that I ever put on, but they, they started turning up on the newer clutches. Disc assembly clutches in release bearing, pilot bearing. This is how that's all put together. Your little pressure plate is actually what pushes against the clutch. You got them, some rivets here, and there's that little diaphragm spring uh, that releases it, and there's your clutch cover. And you know, you've seen the clutches I bring out here lay on the table, you've seen that before. And you got uh, retainer plate, spring, stop pins, friction washers, and then there's another retainer plate. There's your landing, got rivets, and the cushion segment, it lets it smoosh a little bit so it doesn't bite so hard. Rivets, friction material. Hydraulic system. Boy, are we ever familiar with the hydraulic system. Remember fighting with the Ranger out there, right? and uh, actuates the release bearing by transferring pedal movement and the release fork via the linkage. Uh, the ones that had cables, occasionally somebody would get in a bind because their cable would lock up. And I used to have to change, I've actually changed clutch cables on some of the older Mustangs out in the parking lot, you know, to get a car going again. But a cable gives trouble. The hydraulic clutch system uh, is a booger bear to bleed if you don't do it in the drive, you know. We put the clutch in the one out here the other day. We put the slave cylinder. The concentric slave cylinder is the one that's actually built in. The escort's got a slave cylinder that's external to the transaxle housing. It's just a little uh, cylinder that really easy to bleed. That was easier to work on with than the concentric ones. Um, so basically, you can diagnose the malfunction here. See, there is your little, you know, whatever it is that's going to release your clutch. See, that's a fork right there. The concentric slave cylinder does away with the fork. There's no fork on that transmission on the Ranger out there because this throwout bearing is built into that concentric slave cylinder. Uh, you can have five categories of clutch release problems. No release, hard pedal, noise, slipping, or chatter. You know what, you know what chatter is, right? When you're letting off, you go boom. You know, it doesn't grab smoothly. It you know, bounces and chatter. Slipping, how do you know when your clutch is slipping? I've got my foot off of it, I'm giving it a gas, and I should be gaining speed, but the engine's gaining speed, the vehicle's not. The clutch is slipping, right? If the automatic transmission is slipping, you'll have the same thing. Uh, it's affected by the components inside and outside the bell housing. That's one of your questions, guys. Don't miss that. Clutch operation is affected by components inside and outside the bell housing. Now, when you complete that test, when you pass it, I give you a little certificate from luck clutches, okay? So you're going to get a certificate out of it if you pass this one. Right? Complete clutch repair starts by identifying the root cause of the failure. Uh, if it doesn't fully release, continues to turn the input shaft to the transmission gears. Imagine this, if you mash the clutch and for some reason or another the clutch is not fully letting go and it's still turning the transmission, you're trying to put it in gear and it's going to grind on you or it won't go in gear. you got to figure out what's going on with that. Uh, excessive free play, that means if, a, like if on this one out here we got now, we got to bleed the clutch some more because it doesn't have enough pedal. It's supposed to be beginning to release the clutch right close to the top instead of moving it four or five inches before it starts releasing, okay? Binding or air and hydraulic system, that's what we got out there. Binding or worn release system component. Slave or master cylinder leak, anything that prevents that system from working right. Bent or distorted clutch component. Whenever some of the people will put a automatic, I mean a, a clutch in, I don't know how many clutches I put in just holding the transmission up and stabbing it in there. But you see somebody that sticks the clutch in there and they splat into that and they're letting it hang. Like for example, this right here is the input shaft out of the transmission right here. All right, so you stick it through the clutch and let's say you got the weight of the transmission and you got the weight of the transmission 
Now this input shaft up next here. You got the weight of the transmission hanging on that. Okay, this is trapped and it can't go anywhere. But now all of a sudden, when you finally get it in there, this is not turning true. It's now bent so that it's always either touching the flywheel or the pressure plate. And, it, and the engine's running and it's always moving the transmission because it is always touching something because you bent it. See what I mean? Or if somebody puts it up there and maybe these splines don't line up right away and they put long bolts in there and they pull the transmission in with long bolts until it finally pops through there, that just about always ruins this pressure plate where it, I mean, this uh, clutch disc, I'm sorry, where it won't ever work right again. Uh, but that's the thing that you got to worry about. Also, the little pilot bearing or bushing that goes around the tip of this, if it's, got, if it's dry or it's got it, the little uh, needles are crumbly and coming apart or if there's something other reason this is sticking, uh, the, this is up in the back of the crankshaft and it can keep trying to turn this just with friction on the tip of that little thing right here. Now your front wheel drive transmission, most of them don't have this little thing sticking out. They just actually have the flex disc here. But uh, this right here is mostly on rear wheel drive transmissions. Yeah, you gotta always, that's why when you're pulling it out, you gotta look really close at that little bearing and see how it looks and all that. Uh, master cylinder firewall flex. What were we seeing out there? What were you saying? When I was mashing the clutch, you were saying the master cylinder's moving. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Just, uh, yeah, the whole master cylinder, the whole firewall was flexing. And, you know, because there's, it's supposed to be strong enough to support that. As a matter of fact, uh, at Ford at one point actually had us put a little steel plate on there to strengthen the firewall, you know, to prevent that from happening. Pilot bearing damage by misalignment. Now that was one of the things I was talking about, where sometimes it can be damaged because it's worn out. Uh, all right, let me see here. Internal root causes, clutch components can be bent, distorted, like I was talking about, flywheel thin or incorrect step or cup, uh, cup dimension. You know, whenever you're putting that thing on, you basically, uh, We'll see those fingers squeezing in, you know, when you're tightening the clutch up, you might have noticed that. Uh, corrodes, damage, or inadequate lubrication on input shaft splines. This is the input shaft splines right here. Now let's say that these things are worn out and rusty and they're sort of rough because a lot of time has gone by. Uh, so basically if you've got, if you may have to replace the input shaft if it's in bad enough shape. There's supposed to be a little dab of lubricant on those splines. Uh, and they actually send some with a clutch, typically. You just put a little bit on the clutch line and it helps. Pilot bush and a bearing worn. Uh, clutch pedal is difficult to actuate. Release system components, sticking, binding, improperly lubricated. All these other things can cause that. But I've also seen some people put these hot rod clutches in there. Uh, you know, these super duper clutches that are supposed to be like for the people that are going to do the uh, crazy racing down at Holt or somewhere. And, uh, that clutch has is, is got so much spring pressure that you've got to have a serious leg to match the clutch, even in a normal circuit, because they're trying to get it to bite really hard. There used to be a brand of clutch, and I can't remember what it was, and every time we saw one of those put in there, people always grouse because it was too hard to match the clutch. Uh, of course, you got worn parts, you know, they're talking about all this stuff, and they got sort of red circles around it. If they make a chirping, squealing, or grinding, or growling noise, insufficient lubrication, now you're not going to lubricate your clutch. But you're basically going to be talking about your throwout bearing there. Worn or seized bearings, vibration in the release system. The interesting thing about these concentric slave cylinders, like the one we put in the Ranger, it's always riding against those fingers. Always riding against it. Back in the day, though, when you let off the clutch, when it just had linkage, that throwout bearing wasn't even supposed to be touching those clutch fingers. But if it was there all the time, you had issues. And now that bearing is set so it's always riding against the finger. It's got a little pressure on it all the time. That was the difference between then and now. Clutch pedal position is key to identifying noise source. You know, if I've let off the clutch and the noise goes away, but I start to mash the clutch and the noise gets louder, I got a throwout bearing issue. All right, so you set your park and brake, put the vehicle in neutral, start the engine, follow the diagnostic procedure. Growling or grinding when clutch is engaged, transmission input shaft bearing. Uh, you know, engaged means when you've let your foot off the clutch, right? Uh, squealing when the pedal is fully actuated and held to the floor. Pilot bearing or pilot wishing. Chirping that intensifies when the pedal is fully actuated. Release bearing when you're, when you're slowly. Chirping or rattling in neutral and it disappears when you actuate it. You got a fork, pivot, ball, contact point. See, there's a bunch of different 
uh, things you can know. That's a little side, uh, you know, diagram of that. Not really a good one. Uh, if the clutch can't fully transmit engine torque, slips under load. End of clutch life. Now here's something else. As this lining and this clutch gets thinner on a clutch that's not self-adjusting, the pedal gets higher. Okay, you got that? As the lining gets thinner, the pedal gets higher. Why is that? Because the pressure plate uh, gets closer to the flywheel because this is thinner. And that's what we were seeing on that. You know, that Ranger, uh, it was way up on the top. I mean, right on the top. I don't know who, who pulled it in here, but you would have felt that. Uh, improper flywheel machining. Nobody machines flywheels anymore. Now, you got to have a special deal to machine a flywheel. Um, there was a uh, time whenever the one time at the Ford place over there they decided they were going to take a flywheel and put it in the cylinder head resurfacing machine and try to, you know, because hey, you know, what's flat in a cylinder head? And uh, but whenever they resurfaced that flywheel and cylinder head resurfacing machine, they had a horrible chatter because it's got to be absolutely perfectly flat. You know, it had just a little, just enough difference on that. Uh, they also have had something to do with the machine anymore, I don't know. Um, now, stone slipping is normal and necessary for smooth engagement. It's going to slip a little bit when you let it go. You remember when you're letting off the clutch, you freeze your, you freeze your foot when the car starts to move, and then you start to pick up a little speed, and you let off of it. You don't freak out and go, ah, and jerk your foot off the clutch. Boop, 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 like that. Bad news, huh? To determine if it slips too much, set the parking brake, start the engine, put it in gear, slowly engage it. If it stalls, the clutch is okay. Right? That's high gear, right? Right? You got it? Not first, like second or third, high gear, something like that. If it stalls the engine, if the engine slows but it doesn't stall, it's slipping a little bit. If it continues to run when the clutch is fully engaged, that's when you've let off, the clutch is slipping a lot. Dual mass flywheels can also cause slipping. Now, what's a dual mass flywheel? It's flywheel that has springs and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the purpose of it? It stores energy from the engine. And when the engine stops, or when the engine's not supporting energy anymore, it takes energy and puts it into the transmission. How does he know that? Because, because I gave him a worksheet. And also because there's a, in uh, your uh, electrode, there's a module that talks about it. Have you guys got to that one yet? He has. <laughs> he's, he's making you boys look bad on electrode. He's punching through those modules. And Noah is too, you know. What is it about these real young guys? They just keep on grinding away, you know. All right, DMF is a source that old clutch shows no signs of slipping, such as heat marks on pressure plate or disintegrated contaminated friction material inspect for broken springs and a loose plate. All right, if it grabs or jerks, now all these questions are part of your test. You better be listening or you're going to fail the test and you won't get your certificate. Possible root causes, oil or grease contamination on the disc. You got something leaking and it slung a bunch of grease up on that lining, it ain't going to bite you. Worn or distorted clutch components if clutch can't clamp disc evenly, misalignment between chassis and driveline components, suspension and ride height modification. All right, loose or broken transmission engine or CV joints. You know, whenever the engine is moving around because it's got broke mounts, what's that going to do? If you've got mechanical clutch linkage, it's going to actually cause things to, you know, change about the, the way the clutch. Uh, is engaging. Before removing the bell housing, inspect the surrounding area and engine for oil leaks. Always check for oil leaks. What did we do on the Ranger? We pull the flywheel off. When we pull the flywheel off, what did we find? The rear main seal was leaking. It wasn't leaking a lot, but it was leaking enough to while you're there, go ahead and let's put a rear main seal in. Was it difficult to put the rear main seal in? No, it was not. How did we get the rear main seal out of it? We knocked a little pole in it, put a screw in it, and used a screw to pull the rear main seal out. And on some of them, you can take a little housing off. That one, you're going to do that. All right. So, there's your component view. That's where they are. Everybody get that turned in. Uh, hard pedal or chatter. Incorrectly routed or pinched cable. That's on one with the cable. Always replace the cable on vehicle equipped with cable release system. If you have a clutch problem, that cable is a pretty good chance going to be what you're looking at. All right. Noise, incomplete release, hard pedal can be caused. Look at this, this is important. You see that little bearing retainer and how it's worn out right there? Well, that little throw out bearing on this style has got a slide on that. And if that throw out bearing can't slide on there because that's worn out, what's that going to do? It's going to make your clutch not work right in it. That's not complicated. 
normal wear, high mileage, incorrect release system adjustment, worn fork, especially at the pivot or ball stud, that's where it, you know, uh, attaches to the case. Insufficient bearing retainer lubrication. There's supposed to be some grease right there, so they're going to slide freely. Hey, you don't want to put so much grease in there that it dribbles out and contaminates the clutch, okay? All right. Contact marks right here on your, uh, you know, excessive pedal free play, noise, hard pedal at mid stroke. That's incorrect release bearing installation. You put that thing on there wrong, it ain't going to work right. Adam Snap, whenever he went, to, he was driving that, uh, I think I was talking, I was talking to you about that, uh, he had that little Nissan Sentra. Uh, that he had when he went to school here. And uh, the transmission, the automatic transmission went bad. And he said, I want to change this over to a manual transmission. Well, it sounds like fun, but I says the only way you're going to be able to do that without having run into a lot of trouble is get you a donor car. So I found him a donor car that was about the same year model. And he changed the flywheel. And he changed the, he, he changed the pedals in the car so he didn't put the pedal. He had to run, every, he had to do everything. He had to put a different shifter in it. Think about all the work he had to do to make that happen. But Snap pulled it off. The only problem was he couldn't seem to get the right clutch disc from the people at the uh, Nissan place. And so finally he went down to CarQuest and Danny uh, measured it and got him the right clutch disc. And he drove that little, uh, it was an 88 Nissan Sentra. He drove that thing for a long time with a manual transmission and he put it there and all that. But let me see, this is a big undertaking. You know what I mean? One of the things Adam Snap knows how to do is start at square one and work his way up. And he's always been able to do that. All right. Symptom, worn groove. You know, this is actually grooved in the uh, throwout area. See how that grease is in there? It's supposed to be greased in there so that that can slide smoothly on that thing. Excessive or insufficient bearing preload, defective or improperly adjusted release system components, you know. Uh, now look at that right here. Release problems, chatter. This is what happened. What do you suppose damaged that? Yeah, it's bent. That's supposed to be nice and flat and bent. What do you suppose happened there? Somebody can come up with an answer. How does a piece of metal that thick get bent? Huh? No. This is before you put it in there, man. Whenever somebody drops something around here, a lot of the time they don't say, I dropped it. They say it hit the floor. You know what I mean? It hits the floor, you're liable to have damaged it to the point where you're going to have some issues. So be careful about that. Uh, misaligned flywheel dowel pins. Do you remember the dowel pins on this one we put on? Got little dowel pins that lined it up. Uh, back in the day, they didn't know them how them. You just had to kind of work it up on them. I've actually done it without an alignment tool by clamping it up there pretty gently, you know, putting the bolts in there, and then eyeballing that, uh, those splines and getting them lined up on that pilot bush in my eyeball. Looking there with my flashlight, looking around, moving a little bit with a screwdriver and keeping it, get it right and then get that thing going right in there. And I tell you what, you got a vested interest when you're laying on a creeper on your back and you're holding that thing up and <laughs> it in there. <laughs> I got where I could put a clutch in one of the Chevrolet trucks we had down at some being offshore. I could put a clutch in one of them in 30 minutes. Because <laughs> they kept burning them things out. They'd burn it out once a month. We had a bunch of Chevrolet trucks and dock workers burning them clutches out left and right. I was throwing clutches all over the place. And you could buy a clutch kit back then for $29. I think now it's like, you know, from $150 to $400, bucks, depending on where you buy it. Noise, slipping, chatter, finger wear. See the worn fingers? Release bearing seized. Release system not adjusted to clutch wear. Cable self adjuster. Now, some of these clutches have a self adjusting thing under the dash, you know. That's a long time ago. Insufficient free clear, insufficient or excessive bearing preload. Driver riding a clutch. See how they put their foot on the clutch, they're riding down the road with their foot on the clutch. You know what I mean? Eddie had this guy, one of them guys down there that his transmission wouldn't, gear selector wouldn't put it in gear and, and the third and fourth. And the guy was driving down the road, just laying his hand on the gear selector until he wore out the fork. And those little ears that went down to the synchronizer were completely gone because of him riding down the road with his hand on the gear selector. You messed one up doing something like that. Noise, no release, slip it. Worn barrier retainer, worn or bent fork, incorrect release bearing installation. Get in here with it. What you doing out there? What's going on here? All right. This is Willie Abram. Uh, Willie, is, Willie is a Vietnam veteran and he went through here a while back and, and he actually uh, uh, brought this uh, Impala up here for us to do the power steering work on. Now, he owned and Kayla did the power steering job. Kayla. Yeah. 
She's not in I'm sure right. none of your name is Kayla. No, okay. that's not it. That's not it. Well, okay. So anyway, it was the... Yeah, it was the sure. Mm -hmm. And if you'll look on my desk in there, you'll find the key. Okay. You're, you're good to go. You got your... Uh, Appreciate it, right. man. No, oh, yeah. Right here. oh, yeah. Right there. Okay. Now, chatter, noise, incomplete release, incorrect clutch insulation. The clutch was distorted when incorrectly bolted into the flywheel. You know what happens whenever you, you know, somebody just, you know how you're supposed to tighten all the bolts evenly instead of tightening some way ahead of the other and then just ramming them in there with an impact wrench and all that? Be really careful about that when you're putting this thing together because you have to do something. All of these questions in that test are covered in here, okay? But don't you, don't you even try that. Can you, you, you be there? Uh, Simply, no release, chatter, no high speed downshifting. See how that's bent? That ain't supposed to be bent. Using a clutch is a brake is a brake to slow the vehicle. We're not driving big trucks here. I mean, that's how you do that on a big truck. And you know, over here, improper handling prior to installation. If you dropped it, don't drop it. It's heavy and it can get away from you, but make sure that you don't drop it. If you do drop it, you're in hot water. Open and shattered. All contamination. You see how that's kind of burned on there? Flywheel will not resurface or resurface improperly. A lot of times it's best if you got a really bad a flywheel is in really bad shape just to replace the flywheel. But nobody in the, nobody resurfaces flywheel in these parts no more. Now that I know of. Alright, hydraulics. Stick and slave on. Master cylinder push rod incorrectly adjusted. Um, I actually have seen on a uh, one of the old uh, cars that was a Mitsubishi, uh, he had to put the, you know, timer belts on it. Well, actually, I had to do the valves because the timer belt would jump kind of much of your valve. Got it all back together. He had issues with the clutch trying to slip a little bit. And all we had to do was, on that one was readjust the, adjust this little clevis down there where the clutch pedal, uh, you know, he basically just needed to adjust the clutch. And then put a clutch in it from that. Uh, driver riding the clutch if it's got grooves and heat marks. And defective or improperly adjusted release system, flywheel and surface serving surface improperly. You notice how many of the times they talk about that? Step or cup dimensions not maintained, engine modifications, clutch components unsuited for increased torque of modified engine. Uh, now here, overheated pressure plate. You can see how it's been getting hot and it's turning blue. Excessive slip and release problem, driver riding the clutch, defective or improperly adjusted release system, modification, clutch components unsuited or increased torque of modified engine. What's that mean? Increased torque of modified engine. That's when you really hop this thing up and you didn't put a different, a stronger clutch in it. So this particular clutch becomes a weak link in the chain. And you end up overloading it because you're driving it too hard. Chatter, <clears throat> release on nice chatter marks on the pressure plate. See that? Uh, incorrect clutch insulation, clutch cover was distorted when it was bolted to the flywheel improperly. See how many mistakes can be made putting it in there causing clutch problems? If you've got, and what they're showing you there is they're showing you this with a straight edge. That's what I was talking about earlier. If that thing's bent, see if you've got a straight edge here and it's bent like that, no release, noise, chatter, because you know it's always dragging against something. Uh, disc installed backwards, backwards meaning that way as opposed to that way, which is the flywheel side, anybody remember? The side just marked flywheel side. Duh, that's going to be this side here. Could you read them little bitty words from where you were? Right. This, is, this right here goes up into that pressure plate and this goes to the flywheel. Because the bolts and all don't like making contact with this junk right here. I've seen people put clutch discs in back of Interfere between the disc and the flywheel and proper installation. Transmission not supported during installation. My thought is hanging on it, you know, just letting it hang on the flywheel. All right, disc of flywheel interference, look at that. Uh, we got, you can see where it's been banging on it and all that. No release, a lot of noise. Put the disc in backwards. Excessive flywheel machining makes it too thin and the bolts stand out too far. Cause the disc to contact the flywheel mountain bolt. Flywheel resurfaced improperly, step or cup dimensions not maintained. And then right here, a high RPM engagement. Oh, 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 yeah. We're taking off, trying to burn out. Uh, Warren pilot or input shaft bearing. Misaligned engine and transmission. Installation. Improperly supported transmission. You know what those dowels are? Whenever you're putting the transmission in, there's a couple of dowels. They'll be dowel sleeves around two of the bolts, or they'll actually be hard dowel. That's supposed to keep the engine and the transmission from 
you're doing this so the bolts get loose. And if somebody leaves those out or just feel like they'd be eight, you know, and it starts to get loose, you can wind up with an engine and transmission bolts getting loose and cause an issue. Um, and that one right there, see that how that's kind of bent and twisted? Um, engine lugging, driving in high gear at low speed. That's engine lugging to be too high of a gear for the load you're pulling, okay? Uh, high RPM engagement, it's even the gross vehicle weight limit, pulling too heavy of a trailer, uh, or put too much in your back. A high speed downshifting. Ooh. All right, noise, uh, that's broken cover plates. No release, driver abuse, or a disc over torque, engine lugging, high RPM engagement, uh, harsh downshifting, modified engine, severe engine transmission. All of this is, is too much force, is basically what we're talking about there. Uh, broken torsion damper. Uh, that's high RPM engagement. See how much of it comes from uh, driving like OJ? All right. One input shaft plan exceeds GBW limits. Um, and harsh engagement. These are worn out splines in here. That's basically showing you the center of that clutch disc. Uh, worn pilot bearing, worn input shaft misalignment between the engine and the transmission. If you see wear marks in the splines of that input shaft, you need to do something about replacing that input shaft. All right. There's your noise shatter and hard pedal. Whatever piece of this busts off and gets down in there, you may have some burnt friction material and you know chunks of it coming off. And that's all once again, driver abuse, harsh downshift and high RPM engagement. Uh, and then slip and shatter release problems for burnt friction material, there's some more of that. All of that's got to do with you know engine mods and all that. And there's your chatter and slipping. If you got transmission oil or engine oil or grease or something on the clutch, it's gonna make it chatter and slip. Uh, you, what if you had really nasty, greasy hands and you're handling this? How many of you guys put brake pads on there? You got dirty, greasy hand prints all over brake pads or brake shoes. You know what I mean? That ain't a good plan, is it? Always make sure your hands are clean when you're handling these parts. All right. Release bearing attachment GM applications. Install the fork. Uh, see that right there? Install the fork leaf spring under the bearing collar instead of putting it in the wrong place. You know, incorrect. Correct. See how that is? They put it on that the wrong way. Some people think that's the basic way it's supposed to be, and that's how that winds up looking like that. How do you like that? Are you guys going to be able to pass the test and get the certificate? And you're under pressure now. I'm not going to say no pressure. I'm going to say lots of pressure. But this is really important. This will be something I'll put in your file folder, and also you can hang it on the wall at home. This is a prestigious award. Furthermore, this is going to be YouTubed. So you'll be able to go right and review it if you need to. Everybody happy? I think Rodriguez is almost through over there. Look at that.